We use level text uh, and guided reading to support STEM and PBL um, in that we pull guided reading groups with leveled text. So the texts uh, have a variety of levels to meet the students who have a lower reading ability as well as the students who have a higher reading ability. Um, and we use those resources to make sure that our guided reading groups not only focus on our ELA standards, um, but also in that they're connected to our overall unit for STEM. All right, fourth graders, so we have been in science learning about something that is going to help us with our final project. When we set a purpose for reading, um, we try to integrate not only our ELA standard, uh, but also connect it with our um, STEM as well. So we try to give them like a focus question for the day that relates to not only what we're learning about in STEM, but also what we're learning about in ELA as well. Reading about energy gives us, the an gives us an answer to our driving question, is that when you read the, the, the text, it gives you a message to your brain about, about whatever you're reading, so in this case, energy. So when you read about the text, you could read about general, general facts about energy or answers about to your driving question. It gives us ideas for our driving question, which is how can you use energy to convert it to another device? We have to make a lot of connections with what we're doing. We're learning about cause and effect, okay? And we are going to try to figure out how cause and effect is related to transferring energy and how transferring energy is going to help us learn how to do what? Very good. So they're not separate ideas, are they? They are ideas that are connected. They are very similar. They're essentially the same. Our skill is stated on the backboard where we do our guided reading. So we can look at it anytime when we're reading. So when we're reading, we can take connections and ideas from our driving question and connect it, connect it with our reading. Um, we were reading a book called Transferring Energy, and we went to page six, and it it showed this girl um, rowing a boat, and that helped us because she was using kinetic and potential energy. No, she was transferring energy, and because when she pulls them back, it goes frontwards, and then when she pulls them front, it goes backwards, and that's transferring energy from the pedals to the well, and, and what it helps it is making it moving. I think the cause on this is that the roller coaster is moving, and the effect is that they're coaster that they're upside down, or that they're on it maybe. I think it's because it's moving and they're upside down. This is different from a traditional guided reading structure in that traditionally guided reading focuses mostly strictly on English language art standards um, and reading strategies that the students need. Um, so not only are we focusing on skills or something related to English language arts, but we're also um, challenging their, their thoughts to be able to connect uh, these ideas to anything from our STEM unit. So we're trying to help them understand that uh, a guided reading session is not just such an isolated a moment. So our skill of the day is cause and effect and it relates to energy because in energy is, energy is basically motion there's many forms so the so and forms can be converted so the conversion is the effect of, ener of energy from being transferred. Our guided reading helps us in the real world because we can make connections when we're like at home or anywhere else and we can say like that is heat energy or that's light energy. Cause and effect helps me learn about energy because in order to create energy there has to be a cause and then the effect would be that there's energy. Like if you um if you pedaling on a bike then the that'll be the cause and the effect will be that you move. 
When I have students reading with me, um, the other students are working independently either on a variety of things such as looking up research on the computers where they're taking notes that directly relates to our PBL unit. We also have students that are on iPads. They are given little task cards that um, like for example that will relate to like our energy unit and they're directly looking up these questions that we later discuss either the next day or if we have time in class we'll go back and you know, check to see if they've actually understood and able to find those. We have students that are working on writing, um, and we also have students that are working on word study. So reading about energy helps us with our driving question because we're we're gonna um, the driving question is how can we make an energy saving device? And for example, we we're doing a, a experiment of lighting up a light bulb. So we had to we had a battery and then we had a light bulb with wires. So we had to make the light, light bulb light up and then we, had to, we put the two edges of the, wire, the wires together with the battery and then um, the energy from the battery transferred to the light bulb and then it made it light up. Uh, we got these task cards and they said they were like questions and we had to look them up on the iPads and they told us answers A through D and we had to pick what what form of energy it was to answer the question. Um, for an example, the first one I got was um, what t what form of energy can melt ice cream? When I search, it says that it melts when the when the when ice cream absorbs heat. And I picked A, which is thermal, which is heat energy. We went on this website on the computers that's called Wonderopolis and we were learning about kinetic and potential energy and we had different numbers and we had to search them up. Reading about energy gives us like information and examples like so when we go to a group we already have more stuff to talk about other than the stuff that we read in group. The electromagnet is, it's like a... Oh, I have an image. I think that reading about energy will um, help us answer the driving question because um, if we're reading, we can find information about all types and forms of energy. So the two basic types are potential and kinetic, which I'll give you an example. Um, dominoes. So when the dominoes are still standing, that's potential energy because it the potential energy is stored in the dominoes. And when the dominoes are knocked over, that's kinetic energy because it's energy in motion. Uh, the challenges for making the integration successful is definitely finding the text to support our PBL unit. It's definitely a stretch sometimes to get those to a variety of text. You know, you always have like, you find grade level, but you may not always have enough research for your lower levels or those ones for higher levels. And that we also struggle sometimes trying to find how to connect our ELA with our STEM. You know, they don't all, always fit so perfectly together and sometimes we're really trying to stretch how can we get our ELA standard to fit with our STEM unit at the time. Finding resources to be able to help students access the same um, information can be difficult, but it's not impossible. We just have to stretch our resources and really find ways to help any student access that text um, so that they can be successful in understanding our unit.